it would be impossible to sum up 2023 entirely. Yep. But I decided to ruin myself by attempting to make a year in review video, which Elliot informed me was a bad idea, but I, I told said, I'm going to do it anyway. I was like, you're doing what? <laughs> Don't do that. You're just, quit, you, you know. So I have they, lost... all, they all saw the videos already. Yeah, we no... have plenty of videos for you to watch this year, but we figured what a nice, cozy way to give you something to watch over the course of many long, long minutes while we're on break. Uh, and here it is. So uh, we're, we're going to do our best to run through a bunch of crazy things that happened here. And if we miss anything or you want to continue the conversation, please, please talk amongst yourselves in the comments. What do you think? Yeah, it's a chat room for you while we're off uh, doing whatever we want to do for the next two weeks, regrouping our brains and resting and all that. Writing these videos, it's a daunting task, and editing them is even more intense. So just give us a break, and let's get the easy stuff out of the way first, since this is its the last video of the year, honestly. This is this is it. We'll be back at the beginning of the year, but uh, Bye. please, let's get the, the housekeeping stuff out of the way. Like the video. Like the video so we can stay within the algorithm. We rarely, very rarely ask this up front, but we figured, you know, it's kind of a, this is a, this is a fun video. We're just having fun here today. It's so. a fun one. Uh, we're always, of course, scared of taking time off. So I'm not. We, well, algorithmically. Oh. So we'd really appreciate it if you did click the like button as a nice holiday gift to us. Yeah. Did we provide it you is, with some entertainment this year? Tis the season of giving, uh -huh. as they say. Okay, let's just start ripping through as much as we can, though. It's a lot. It was a whole year. Yeah. 365 days of it. And and uh, I didn't check the exact numbers, but I average around 150 episodes or more. Yeah, something like that. Ugh. So, yeah, it was a year filled with drama, chaos, hilarity, computer-generated nonsense, animals turning on humans, indictments, election nominee debates and infighting, unions on strike and winning, X, formerly known as Twitter, and its brain-broken owner, and of course, the fact that, according to conservatives, everything on Earth has gone woke, unfortunately. There's a lot to get to, and, and most of the bigger topics are things we talk about frequently on this show, so instead, let's just pull something from earlier in the year, we might have uh, we might have forgotten about it by now, but yeah. remember when that freight train that was hauling a bunch of dangerous chemicals just pfft, derailed in Ohio, causing a massive fire and releasing hydrogen chloride into the air, sending local residents fleeing, raising questions about the toxicity of the air and water in the area. That yeah, was that fun. Happened. It was, a it was a gigantic mess that also highlighted major issues within our country's railways, especially when it comes to maintenance, regulations, and other safety guidelines that relate to the amount of crew on staff and how many hours they are allowed to work. Uh, if one massive train derailment wasn't enough, the Norfolk Southern Wreck was followed up by at least two other freight train derailments within a few short weeks. And I love their excuse at the time. They're like, guys, it's not a big deal. This shit happens every fucking day. Wait, hold look, on. <laughs> look at this fucking calendar. These are all the derailments. These things are falling off the tracks all the time. And by the way, we're going to have a couple more before this briefing's over with. So yeah. uh, just get with the time. And please ignore the fact that just like... A month ago, uh, the president personally stepped in to stop these people from uh, striking. Yeah. striking. Uh, also, those videos that you're seeing of dead fish washing up on shores. Come on, guys. Those fish were already dead. Those yeah. fish were Hamas. They were placed there by Hamas. Uh, so, yes, the, the train derailment, one of the biggest stories uh, early on in the year. And that is obviously a pretty heavy way to start out a re yearly recap. So let's talk about people using feces as a form of protest instead. And they were using feces against uh, something you don't really expect people to use feces against. Musical theater and dance performances. Oh, yeah. And Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Uh, and that it was related to uh, a Broadway musical. Yeah. So, yeah, p poop <laughs> showed up in the fine arts more than once this year, with the first story being published in February, which explained how a ballet director lost his job. On Saturday night in Hanover's main opera house, Marco Gecki, a renowned German choreographer, smeared dog feces from his aging Dachshund, uh, Gustav, on the face of a dance critic. In a telephone interview on Thursday, Mr. Gecki, who has been charged with assault, said he had apologized deeply for the incident. What he did to Miss Hutzer, who writes for the Elliot, please take it, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, was truly an awful thing, he added. And here's just my favorite part of this article. Newspaper coverage of the incident, though, had focused only on the dog feces, he said, whereas he wanted to start a debate about what should be allowed in arts criticism. Yeah, I mean, everyone's focusing on the poop. 
What about the healthy debate about art criticism? Yeah, I, I don't know why everyone's just talking about the poop here. I entered the marketplace of ideas with a bag of my dog's shit. My aging <laughs> Dachshund. Does, does the Dotson, does the poop come out long too? <laughs> yeah, it's like a Play-Doh thing. You just push, you push its tail and it comes out like that. Well, the second fine arts feces moment came shortly after when a mysterious deuce was left on the floor of a Broadway musical suspiciously close to former first lady and secretary of state and never going to be president Hillary Clinton and her daughter Chelsea. So close, in fact, that people saw this as a protest to her presence mm -hmm. from Insider at the time. A fellow theater goer pooped near Hillary and Chelsea Clinton during a <laughs> performance of Some Like It Hot <laughs> last week, Page Six reports. According to one of the outlet's sources, two human turds, two, <laughs> were discovered near the famous mother-daughter pair when lights went up for intermission. The house crew dealt with it very appropriately and quickly, and Hillary and Chelsea remained in the theater for the second act, one source told Page Six. The person who defecated may be a repeat offender. Per Page Six, one of their sources saw an eyewitness speaking to a house manager who said that it was actually the fourth time it had happened. <laughs> uh, by the way, I saw this on Broadway, this, Some Like It Hot, not the Did one anyone with poop? The poop. There was no poop involved, but one of the most fantastic musicals I've ever seen on Broadway. Isn't that about uh, men dressing as women? Yes. So Broadway's gone woke is what you're saying. Unfortunately. <laughs> no, it was a wonderful musical and the entire cast was amazing. It was one of the best ones I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot. Yeah, you have. Despite not being a theater kid, I uh, sure love the I, theater. You, I think you are now an honorary theater kid. Thank you. Uh, also loosely related to the topic of uh, poops, <laughs> uh, we should highlight one of our favorite tweets from back then as well. 2023's version of All My Apes Gone. A tweet that will... Be seared into my memory forever. Yeah. Here you go. All, I'm completely devastated. My wallet has been completely drained. And all my NFTs and ETH, gone. My Bored Ape Yacht Club, Mutant Ape Yacht Club, Coda, Three Doggos, Bored Ape Yacht Club Land, Nine Rumble Kongs, all gone. All because I wanted to play Dookie Dash on my laptop. Hashtag Dookie Dash. Hashtag Dookie Dash on my laptop. Get it trending. Please, someone, can't I get all of my apes back? No, you can't. No. Sorry. That's, well, you shouldn't have been playing Dookie Dash, which yeah. is a very real game. It is, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a subway runner, but, like, <laughs> you're in a fucking toilet or something, or a uh -huh. sewer. A uh, Skibidi toilet, which I didn't even bring up because we didn't cover it on this, but uh, something uh, the kids are Somehow into. I've managed to avoid any of that. Like, I'm vaguely aware that there's a head in a toilet, yeah. and the kids love it. That's it. It looks like I don't it's need done to dig in that any... Valve creation engine kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, uh, Source Filmmaker. Glad uh, to see that's still going. This was one of the first years where I actually legitimately felt old and out of touch. Because there's there's ish, there's things like that where I'm just like, I missed out on this completely. Yeah, I don't need to know. Have yeah. fun with it, though, kids. It's fine. That's your, the toilet, that's your thing. Enjoy. But while we're talking about tweets, not Twitter, not the, Twitter yet. The platform formerly known as Twitter. Shh. Just tweets. I want to throw in my favorite tweet of 2023. Just really quick, and honestly, it's no contest for me. It has to be the one where Jordan Peterson tweeted out a video from what was alleged to be a Chinese dick milking factory, adding, <laughs> such fun in unbelievable techno nightmare CCP hell. Do you see what they're doing in China? They're milking they're people. They're milking the And I want to be milked too. So for clarity, it was just a porn fetish video. It was not actual footage from the actual Chinese dick milking factory. Which raises so many questions about how he came across this clip. Yeah. Um, why did he have it in his possession? Well, he retweeted another clip that was like, this is oh. from inside the Chinese dick milking factory. And he just... He yeah. ran with it and was like, you see what you see what we're up against? Like the intellectual titan he is, he was just like, yep, sounds good. <laughs> That's what's happening. Um, yeah, it wasn't actual footage from the Chinese dick milking factory, but the fact that Jordan Peterson believed it says a lot about our society. It really does. It makes you... It makes you want to cry! <laughs> These woke moralists won't stop until every dick is milked. Was Up Yours Woke Moralist this year? I can't. I can't remember. I don't think so. We'll see who cancels who. Mm -hmm. Speaking of freaks, though, this next guy came right out of left field because he wasn't on our radar at all until this year. But that's okay because he's turning back the clock so much that we'll get to cover his antics forever. Yeah. We're talking about Brian Johnson, the 46-year-old millionaire who founded Venmo and is now trying to reverse his aging by using his son as a blood bag, following an extreme fitness and nutrition regimen, experimental uh, medical procedures, and receiving what are described as constant and painful penis injections 
in addition to shock therapy sessions down there as well. But folks, the results, they don't lie. This guy definitely doesn't look a day over 21. Yeah, that is definitely not a man in his 40s who, you know, eats well and exercises. And that is, that clearly is a, isn't going through a midlife crisis. That's an immortal right there. Yeah, he, he glows like a ghoul. He glows and he shines. And apparently his dick is at least 15 years younger now. But he's working on those numbers. He's going to get that down yeah. to 21. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, 2024 is going to be a big year for Brian Johnson because despite his best efforts, the, the gears of time, they keep on turning. A prediction for 2024. Brian Johnson is going to start uh, drinking exclusively human breast milk. <laughs> he's going to find well, a way to justify that and he's going to start doing it. I'm sure he already drinks, like, raw milk or something. Well, that's from a cow. Yeah. I need the nutrients intended for a baby. If I want to have the skin and organs of a baby, Yeah. if I want to have the penis of a baby, I need to he's drink mommy like milk. He's following, like, the Mad Max uh, live forever kind of plan. Yeah. See, he's got the blood boys, he's got the milkmaids, or he's, he will have the milkmaids. He's in Morton Joe. Yes. And he controls the water. So pay attention. Anyway, on the topic of weird guys, uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama was caught up in some controversy earlier this year when videos started circulating of him asking a young boy to suck his tongue. Hmm, strange. Forcing the Dalai Lama to then issue an apology and, and for a bunch of sites and experts to come out and attempt to persuade the public that actually, uh, this was totally normal. Not just you're normal. The, you're the yeah. one that's weird. This is a... Uh... This has been happening for a long time. The Red Hot Chili Peppers even made a, a whole song about this, <laughs> so you're the one that's weird. In the bizarre Twitter statement, the account stated, A video clip has been circulating that shows a recent meeting when a young boy asked His Holiness the Dalai Lama if he could give him a hug. His Holiness wishes to apologize to the boy and his family, as well as his many friends across the world, for the hurt his words may have caused. His Holiness often teases people he meets in an innocent and playful way, even in public and before cameras. He regrets the incident. Hmm. So that was weird. It was a confusing statement then. It remains so now. Yeah, it kind of skirts the issue. And uh... Dalai Lama's a pretty weird guy. <laughs> what else is he up to over there? <laughs> but as uh, NBC News reported at the time, according to Tibetan folklore, a cruel 9th century Tibetan king had a black tongue. So people stick out their tongues to show that they are not like him, the Institute said on its website. There's no mention of tongue sucking on the site. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good follow up there to their article. By the way, no, uh, it, it, they pointed us to this, uh, all this yeah. information. There's a talk about tongue, but nothing about sucking on a tongue. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the Dalai Lama, he, he, in his apology, basically made it seem like he was like, he made like a crude joke or yeah, something what, like that. what? What? What's the big deal? You, yeah, you can't say anything these days with cancel culture the way it is. Yeah, they're coming for his holiness as well. Dalai Lama's about to release a Netflix special called Triggered. Yeah. <laughs> Him and Rob Schneider, yeah. they've joined up for the ultimate comedy tour. Uh, but anyway, someone who kept fucking around uh, and then eventually found out was YouTuber Lord Miles Rutledge, who was captured by the Taliban earlier this year after his third trip to Afghanistan, a place where he'd already been rescued from during the troop withdrawal back in 2021. This time, the Taliban announced that they had captured Lord Miles alongside a few other guys who were actually there for legitimate humanitarian reasons. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they loved being cooped up with old Lord Miles. Oh, cool. Yeah. What are you in for? Oh, uh, making weird YouTube videos about going to places you definitely shouldn't be going to? I was here trying to offer medical services yeah. to people on the ground. Well, anyways, it's going to be a wild guess, few months. Guess we're in here together. From Vice at the time, Rutledge was detained by officers of the Taliban's General Directorate of Intelligence, GDI, on January 11th. Along with Rutledge, the GDI arrested volunteer medic Kevin Cornwell and another unidentified hotel manager. All three are UK citizens. Lord Miles Rutledge and the accounts who claim to speak for him say that he was treated well, almost like a king, and that the Taliban thought he was really cool. These are, of course, coming from accounts uh -huh. that uh, are friendly with him or that he runs himself. Despite all of that, Lord Miles was eventually released alongside the other hostages in October of this year, and we can only assume that their, their big relief was getting away from Lord Miles. Um, well, he claims to be back. Oh, God. In Afghanistan. 2024 right is already working itself up into another amazing Lord Miles he story. He has already, just months after the UK 
used up all their diplomatic channels to get him back. He yeah. is for the for like the second or third time. Yeah, um, he can't keep getting away with it. I don't think he's coming back from this one, but he, we'll see. He claims that while he was there, and and you have to assume that the other hostages weren't being treated as well as him because he was gloating. He was like, "Yeah, I had servants and stuff." Yeah, mm, I mean, maybe, but who knows? Someone had to teach the Taliban how to roll, how to rollerblade. Yeah, thank you, Lord Miles. Mm-hmm. Anyway, there were other YouTubers in trouble this year, though, of course, just like any other year, yeah. and one in particular. <laughs> was able to reach the absolute uh, pinnacle, the apex of YouTube apologies. Nobody did it better than this next person. Sorry, no more apologies allowed. <laughs> we've, uh, we've, this is the ultimate apology. Yeah. This was Colleen Ballinger, a.k.a. Miranda Sings, a.k.a. Uh, the extremely annoying lady with the giant red lipstick from the olden days of YouTube fame when you could just make funny faces and people would be like, here's a Netflix deal. Yeah. Uh, she was called out over her uh, some accusations of inappropriate behavior with her young fans. That's putting it lightly, yeah. Yeah, this ranged from private messages to making people uncomfortable at her live appearances to inappropriate comments in general. Shortly after these accusations were picked up by the press, Colleen Ballinger recorded the performance art piece of a lifetime, a 10 minute long musical apology where she stared into the camera, playing a ukulele and rhyming together a total non-apology apology to millions of viewers who sat there in awe of what they were witnessing. Give this woman a streamy. What a performance. Uh, it's that, uh, what, what is it? What was the refrain, the chorus? Uh, uh, toxic gossip train. Yes, yeah, something like Whip that. With allegations. <laughs> I'm not a groomer. I'm just a loser. Ugh. <laughs> I'm getting chills thinking about yeah. it. Days later, uh, the 10 minute song was released on iTunes under the name Toxic Gossip Train. Her team denied that she released it officially. Uh, The song was eventually removed, but yeah. The Miranda Sings controversy, it came and went. Um, uh, Is she still making videos? I don't know. I don't know. Don't tell me. Yeah. But, you know, that in terms of scandals. uh, Very brief, much like most scandals, very brief. The scandal of the year, folks. Come on down. No scandal persisted as much as the next one. Yeah, Bud Light has gone woke. Oh and boy. so that, uh, that means I'm gonna shoot it with my gun. Mm-hmm. Now, whatever part of the conservative brain that hadn't been broken by the pandemic was immediately destroyed in April of this year when trans TikTok star Dylan Mulvaney participated in a seemingly innocuous promotional post for Bud Light Beer where they had sent influencers uh, single solitary cans of beer Literally with their faces on them. One TikTok that you would have never seen. If it wasn't you, for unless, Steven Crowder and Tucker Carlson. Yeah, if you didn't follow Dylan Mulvaney, you would not know this existed, but because uh, Steven Crowder and Ben Shapiro and all these guys are just constantly hitting refresh on all the trans people's social media profiles, this yeah. became international news. Yeah, uh, D- Dylan Mulvaney received one of those promotional cans, spoke about it on a video, and then all hell broke loose. Suddenly, chuds across the country started pouring out their Bud Light, smashing their bottles, going into stores and destroying inventory, and in some cases, lining up their entire supply and unloading on it with high-powered weapons. Keeping in mind that this was one can, created for a small targeted campaign for a popular influencer, it did, none of that stopped conservative media from launching an all-out assault on Bud Light and Dylan Mulvaney as if they were forcing conservative men to drink beer that would make their own dicks fall off. They're putting estrogen in the beer. It was, it, it was and remains insane. It was so stupid. Mm-hmm. They were furious. And what followed were months, seriously, months, like every day hearing about this fucking shit. Months of coverage and outrage, including one video in particular from Kid Rock where he shoots a bunch of cases of the beer in front of a lake somewhere. And also has help and also injured his hand in the process. Yeah. The bullets are coming from all angles. Ain't nobody gonna tell me how to live. That's right, baby. Uh, the boycott was effective for arguably the first time in conservative boycott history. The people behind the promotion were fired. InBev stock sank, though it has pretty much recovered by now. Yeah. And grifters lined up to start selling eager customers their own beer. Beer that wasn't woke. Uh Uh-oh, look at that. Here comes ultra-right beer, the first 100% conservative, 100% woke-free American beer, which at the very least gave us one of the most ridiculous commercials of the year. What was that guy doing in the bathroom? We still don't know. He was filling those cans with his piss, wasn't he? (laughs) Hey, right right from the source. This is dick-to-table beer. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we actually have an update on the Bud Light controversy, because, folks, today is Armistice Day. Kid Rock... 
himself has told his loyal subjects to stand down, that he is, he's done boycotting Bud Light. He has declared a humanitarian ceasefire yeah. in the fight. It's okay to drink Bud Light. It doesn't make you gay. Yeah, but this has been a long time coming, but because of, uh, according to the bartenders at his restaurants, Bud yeah. Light was back in, on the menu immediately. Yeah, and he's been photographed drinking it. He just can't quit it. Which is hilarious because Bud Light is indis- indistinguishable from yep. like 10 other brands oh, of light beer in Within this two weeks, Miller and Coors had their own like LGBTQ scandals. But they were like, well, at least it's not as bad as putting the face on the can. So, yeah. But for a moment there, we did have the very funny experience of seeing conservatives try to buy beer that wasn't under the inbre- InBev umbrella, which is next to impossible. I was, like, well, yeah. I found this other beer. Hey, like, wait, there's buddy. like really complex laws in this country about selling beer, especially across state lines. Yeah, that too. But they were looking at like uh, like supposedly craft beers yeah, that yeah. had been purchased by InBev over the years, so they couldn't escape it. Oh, right, right, The, right. the one thing I will say, though, is that uh, I have had the first-hand experience I had going to Sturgis, the motorcycle rally, with my dad this mm-hmm. year. There was a gigantic Budweiser display, and... People avoided it like the plague. They were like, I do not want to be caught on camera in front of the... the." They were giving out free beer. And people were like, absolutely not. So lame. Yeah. I, I'm just mad that Bud Light... I was hoping I'd be able to get it for, like, cheap. No. The prices did not go down. No. Uh, the, the, the avoiding Bud Light was, like, the least on the scale of weirdness that I saw there because the, the worst thing I saw was just people selling loose ammunition on the streets and yeah, uh, loose silencers and... <laughs> Give me a Lucy. <laughs> I might need a bullet later. Yeah, for, for rock bottom prices, too. I was, uh, it was very unsettling and made me weep for the country. Now, speaking uh, of woke, yeah, uh, we know that Riz is on the top of a bunch of official lists for this year. Of words. Yeah. And that woke was being deployed as a pejorative before 2023. But it still has to be our word of the year because it was the most overused, misunderstood, incendiary, reactionary, catch-all term for just anyone's grievance just any grievance yeah. that we've ever seen. It is an utterly meaningless word at this point. Mm-hmm. It was so overused that Ron DeSantis' campaign, which was positioned as an all-out attack on woke, quickly lost steam with even former President Trump saying that the term was overused. That's mm-hmm. when you know it's done. Still, though, everyone that conservative or everything the conservatives don't like this year, everyone and everything, was labeled woke. Uh, there was no escaping it. We just talked about beer being woke, but here's a list of other things that were referred to as woke this year. And if we missed anything, we probably did. Yeah. But uh, let us know in the comments. Let us know what went woke. (laughs) Okay, here's what, according to conservatives, was woke in the year 2023. Xbox. College. Chat GPT and other LLMs. All of Generation Z. A breakfast cafe named woke. Legos. Hollywood. Failed banks. Books. Federal investments. Climate science. The military. (laughs) Chick-fil-A. Cracker Barrel. Michelangelo's David. Theme parks. The police. Video games. Howard Stern. Department stores. And of course, Elon Musk's AI chatbot, Grok, which is woke, unfortunately. Yeah. So what a year it's been for the dumbest, most overused term on earth. A term so stupid, in fact, that you might recall a clip from earlier this year when someone who literally wrote a book about woke indoctrination couldn't even define the word woke while making appearances on news programs to market her books about the wokeness. Yeah. So, I mean, woke is sort of the idea that, um, I, this is going to be one of those moments that goes viral. And the frequency with which new and different companies were being reported on as woke started dipping about halfway through the year. And the reason why was painfully obvious. Tucker Carlson was suddenly and inexplicably fired from Fox News, despite being their biggest ratings draw. The reason behind the firing was never fully confirmed, but it was clear that executives behind the scenes were worried about his intense and increasingly racist rhetoric, the false and misleading claims about everything from January 6th to the 2020 election, and multiple internal lawsuits and accusations against his production staff. Tucker was able to very quickly find a home over on Elon Musk's platform where he started posting shorter shows exclusively to everyone's timelines and allowing Musk to point to him as not only a success for metrics, but also a clear sign of what kind of content is going to be successful on the cesspool that Twitter had become. Tucker recently announced that he's shifting outside of Twitter in the very near future and launching his own streaming platform. Still, regardless of where we're at now, 
The week that Tucker was fired was insane, and it was hard to believe that Fox News would have the guts to do it, considering how large his show had become. Fox News has gone woke. Ah, they add them to the list. Uh, but anyways, now he just interviews Andrew Tate and peddles conspiracy theories. So no need to pay attention to Tucker Carlson anymore. Yeah. His views have been dipping. He, he gets like these random spikes every once in a while by bringing on Alex Jones or whatever. Yeah. But it's just unsustainable. And he's, hopefully he's, he fades away into obscurity like uh, Bill O'Reilly, who exists still and has his own streaming yeah, he, thing, but you don't hear from him anymore. No, you don't. Oh. He's nothing without his platform. No. All right, anyway, we got to take a quick break here for a second, let everyone catch their breath. And tell you that first off, we, we'd want to say thanks to everyone who checks out our sponsors. Yeah. They make it possible for us to do this as our full-time job. And we know that ads are intrusive, but we try our best to approve stuff that's actually worth trying. Mm -hmm. Having said that, this episode is sponsored, so take a second to please thank Factor for sponsoring so many episodes this year. And helping me, including uh, this one. Helping me cut down the pounds. I was a Factor boy all year long. The results Factor Boys Assemble. Mm -hmm. This bustling holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, flavorful meals to fuel you on jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you eat well for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all your holiday to-dos. Cross meal prepping off your list this holiday season with Factor. Skip the meal planning, grocery shopping, chopping, prepping, and cleaning up and get Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals delivered to your door. They're ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Treat yourself to high-quality, delicious meals over the holidays. And choose from 35-plus chef-crafted meals every week that support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences, whether it's Calorie Smart, Vegan and Veggie, Protein Plus, and more wholesome options. Looking for calorie-conscious options over the holidays that don't skimp out on the flavor? Try delicious, dietitian approved Calorie Smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. Or need an extra boost to support your wellness goals and feel your best during the holidays? Try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. I, my favorite of the year, the number one, uh, the shredded chicken taco bowl. Yeah, I would it's a damn it, good one. I, I would keep it on the chef curated list, but if, if something like I knew that I wouldn't like, I'd always throw that shredded taco bowl on there. Shred it. Get mm -hmm. shredded. That's right. Factor isn't just for dinner, folks. Count on extra convenience any time of day with an assortment of 55 plus add-ons to suit various preferences and tastes. Choose from quick breakfast items, lunch to go, grab and go snacks, and ready to drink cold pressed juices, shakes, and smoothies. Those smoothies are damn. I good. just got a, a whole slug of smoothies and they are great. With Factor, you can rest assured that you're making a sustainable choice. They offset 100% of their delivery emissions and source 100% renewable electricity for their production sites and offices. This December, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com newsday50 and use code newsday50 to get 50% off. That's code NEWSDAY50 at factormeals.com slash NEWSDAY50 to get 50% off. Another recurring sponsor that we love and one that will save you money on your wireless bill is Mint Mobile. And they're back with a new deal for our viewers. So here you go. Give yourself the gift of insane savings this holiday season with Mint Mobile's best wireless deal of the year. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three-month plan, you'll get another three months for free. That's six months of premium wireless service for the price of three. Mint Mobile lets you order and activate from home while saving tons on phone plans starting at just $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. Seriously, we can't think of a better gift than turning an overpriced wireless bill into just $15 a month with Mint Mobile. By selling online and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily and effortlessly with eSIM. Or if you need a new device, for a limited time, get six months of free service when you buy a select device and plan. Switch to Mint Mobile and get your first three months of premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. For a limited time, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months free by going to mintmobile.com slash newsdump. That's mintmobile.com slash newsdump. New customers only. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. All right, now back into the more of the dumbest shit from the past year, and nobody, nobody did it dumber than Elon Musk and his new and totally original platform, X. Are we going to recap an entire year of Elon Musk? Absolutely I'm gonna, not. Okay, good. No, we could sit here and go through every stupid thing he did to ruin the platform and 
just ruined his own public persona. We could talk about how he's done more work than anyone when it comes to driving advertisers away, or how he kept inserting himself into issues that not only have nothing to do with him, but are actually hindered by his presence. But, as Elliot alluded to, we'd be here all day, yeah. and we already have dozens of episodes from this year that you can just rewatch instead. Go to there's a there's playlist, a playlist. Called, it's called Musk Watch. I yeah, believe. it's all there. Uh, needless to say, he's done a damn good job at turning Twitter into a cesspool filled with the worst people on earth who are incentivized to post the most incendiary content you can think of, and that includes Musk himself, who keeps saying just a bunch of racist or ignorant shit then getting called out for it, and then claiming that these are actually totally normal ideas and getting mad at advertisers for not run, wanting to run campaigns against ads like, or tweets like his own. Yeah. <sighs> so yeah, he ruined the verification program by allowing anyone with $8 to get the blue check mark, which, which really just made them targets for mockery. He ruined the way that links work multiple times, removed headlines from articles so that no information is listed on links, uh, he allows feature-length films to be uploaded and broadcast on his platform. He shadow bans people that he disagrees with, and so on and so forth. Uh, one big highlight for this year, though, was his stupid fight with fellow tech executive Mark Zuckerberg. And that's fight in quotes, because no fighting actually took place. No, it was just a spat. And uh, for the most part, Mark Zuckerberg was just an unwilling participant who said, all right, okay. I yeah. mean, sure, do you want to set this up? I'm ready to kick your ass at any moment. Uh, we should do it in a way that aligns with my respect for the sport, obviously. Yeah. So, Mark Zuckerberg is, of course, already trained in MMA. He competes. Everyone knew this, except for Elon. Yeah. So, yeah, he was totally down for hopping into the octagon with Musk, who clearly did not know anything about that when he challenged him. No, he was fight. like, I'm just going to shoot myself up with some Ozempic and be yeah. in fighting shape in no time. So, what came next were two whole months of pathetic excuses, chest-pounding, childlike mockery, even an appearance from Elon Musk's mom, who tried to get the fight to change from an MMA bout to a battle of wits or something. Mm. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> uh, Musk fucking sucks, and he was completely inescapable this year. We don't, e we don't really see that changing anytime soon because he has made himself the de facto main character of this generation, and he won't stop shoving his way onto the national stage until he's finally wasted all of his money and power, and he's got a lot of money and power to waste. Yeah. Also, he finally released that stupid, dumb-looking Cybertruck to about a dozen people. And if you drive one, you should expect people to make fun of you for it. And you should expect to get stuck in mud, snow, just anything that isn't a road. And according to the videos released this week, at any point in time, uh, three white dudes in spurries could show yeah. up and start kicking it. Yeah, uh, it's it's <laughs> finally, uh, finally a car for people who get beat up by nerds. Yep. One actual gift that Musk provided, however, was the gift of girl boss Lindy Yaccarino. Yas! who became the CEO of X slash Twitter in May and has been the best employee slash fall gal that Musk could ask for. Linda has taken every horrible situation and turned it into the most boring and banal executive jargon that you can imagine. Hot dog. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I mean, anytime something bad on, happens on the platform, she just starts talking about sports or, or fashion or hot dogs. It all happens on X. And that's while the website is literally rotting from the inside due to rampant anti-Semitism, hate speech, copyright infringement, clickbait, engagement farming, and a massive advertiser boycott that has resulted in ads that consist of scams, self-help gurus, and pants with a special hole cut in them for jacking off. It's gotten so bad that even her fellow executives, who are, consider her a friend. Uh, a peer. From the advertising space, people who have known and worked with Linda for years have started privately, and in some cases publicly, begging Linda to cut her losses and run before she ruins what's left of her professional reputation. Nevertheless, she persisted. She's taken the term girl boss to incredible new heights, remaining professional and forward thinking. She's taken everything in stride and has become skilled in immediately diverting attention away from any situation by saying something like, football's great. Pumpkin pie is delicious, and it all happens on X. Hot dog. Hot dog. We love you, Linda. I love Linda. I, uh, I believe in 2020, 2024 will be the last year that Linda is at that company. Uh, I don't know how long she makes it into 2024. She was hired in May. Yeah, I, Maybe it'll be May. I think she's got a one-year uh, sentence. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, obviously, we do have to talk about the absolute animal onslaught this year, and no creature on Earth did it better than the humble orca. The killer whale. We can't begin to explain why orca attacks on humans and boats started skyrocketing this year, but we do feel pretty confident in saying that the animals of this world are sick and tired 
of how we are treating this planet and all the noise pollution, not to mention actual pollution, that fill their oceans with a bunch of shit that they don't want, mm-hmm. they don't need, they want it They out can finally feel that the temperatures are rising in that ocean and they are, they are pissed. Yeah, like, shuck please. Yeah. Although, yeah, it could be as simple as just pure revenge because the escalating attacks by orcas in the Strait of Gibraltar, they do come after an orca named White Gladys, experienced a traumatic episode with a ship and was, I guess, never the same. No. White Gladys apparently started attacking ships first, and, and one of the predominant theories is that the other orcas learned from her actions. Whatever it was, the attacks continued throughout the summer and early fall, and they were not restricted to just the Strait of Gibraltar either. In June, an orca attacked a boat about 2,000 miles away off the coast of northern Scotland. Word is getting out. Mm-hmm. It's fun to make boats sink. Yeah, and people get real upset about it, and it's very funny to watch them get angry. From The Guardian at the time, Dr. Wim Rutten, a 72-year-old retired Dutch physicist and experienced yachts person, was sailing solo from Lerwick to Bergen in Norway. He was fishing for mackerel with a single line off the back of the boat when the orca suddenly appeared in the clear water and hit the stern of the seven-ton boat. I said, shit! Rutten, who said he had heard about the Portuguese accidents, told the Guardian. The whale hit again and again, creating soft shocks through the aluminum hull. These attacks continued throughout the rest of the year and at one point became nearly a weekly occurrence and these occurrences were bad enough that they garnered news coverage. So there was definitely a spike in orca incidents. Then, towards the end of the year, people, they hatched a plan. But that plan might have just made things worse. A what? few short weeks ago, <laughs> we reported on the fact that sailors were attempting to use heavy metal music to annoy the orcas so that they would just leave them alone. Most researchers agreed that this would either do nothing or actually make them even angrier. And in at least one of the scenarios, the orcas did rip the rudder off a ship that was playing the Metal for Orcas playlist. So This is like, oh, I don't want to get attacked by a bear, so I'm going to run up to a bear and slap it in the face. Yep. What the hell? What were you thinking? Well done. And uh, honorable mention for animal attacks, of course, goes to uh, bison for constantly goring tourists. Yeah, thank you. The bison of Yellowstone, uh, you know, keeping it up. Every year, every year, multiple, dozens of fucking morons are like, oh... I'm here at the world's biggest petting zoo, apparently. I'm going to yeah. go pet that... Look like, at that fluffy cow. That The biggest cow I've ever seen with yeah. horns that could just absolutely tear me to pieces. I'm going to go up to it and uh, see what happens. Yeah. Oh, no. That was a bad idea. Also, well, lesson learned. Honorable mention, of course, goes to that otter who kept stealing surfboards as well. Yeah, multiple... Uh, we got a lot of otter news. There was that otter attack in yeah. Montana. And, of course, the hogs. The hogs were up to no good. The they're, hogs... They're still invading. Always present. Always scheming. Very menacing stuff. Yeah, those super hogs, they're coming down from Canada. There ain't nothing we can do. Nope. But it was more than just orcas that drew everyone's attention to our vast oceans because in June of this year, the world screeched to a halt. While everyone was captivated by the real life drama playing out 12,500 feet underwater as the Titan submersible went missing during a dive to the wreckage of the Titanic. After losing contact with its mothership, a search and rescue mission was initiated and the whole world followed along hoping that they'd all be found alive and safe. Uh, Everyone was very high on hopium for about a week. Yeah, so in reality, the submarine had imploded instantly. The five people inside almost certainly died before they could even comprehend what was happening. Just like that. In fact, after the debris field was found, the Navy chimed in and said, well, okay, look, we... We heard an implosion a few days ago uh, about the exact time when this would have happened. We didn't want to be a wet blanket. You know, everyone was getting so hopeful. Sure, there were scientists and and people on the news saying, no, these people are fucking dead. But that made people feel bad. And this was an opportunity to give the world a little bit of hope, even though that was literally impossible. It was a tragedy for sure, and those people on board shouldn't have died such easily preventable deaths. I mean, step one would be like not getting into some guy's ramshackle submarine that he drives with a Logitech controller. Yeah. But also, the submarine should have never been in the water in the first place. Um, In the days and weeks that followed the disappearance and implosion of the sub, people started talking about their interactions with OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush and how they had warned him that something terrible was absolutely going to happen. You're going to kill someone. In an ironic twist, Not only did this implosion make these folks the first people to die at the wreck of the Titanic in over a hundred years, but it was uncovered that Stockton Rush was married to a descendant of a couple who died when the boat sank back in 1912. He was driving a submarine with a game controller 
and it was a death tube that didn't resemble the submarines that are actually used at those depths. Yeah. It was just a tube made with old parts of planes driven by a, a, a mad cat. What an insane saga. Yeah. Also, remember the side plot of uh, one of the dead guy's stepsons using, trying to use the incident? Yeah. Trying to clout chase off the incident? Trying to get laid. Trying to get laid, trying to talk to porn stars, trying to get backstage at the Blink-182 He concert. was having the week of his life. Just yeah. like, hey, Blink-182, don't you feel bad that my dad's probably dead? Would be really cool to meet you. Also, I uh, am a cyber stalker and, in one case, a real-life stalker yeah, he's of not celebrity a good dude. DJs. He's still up to it. At last I checked, he was posting, like, literal Heil Hitler shit, so... Jesus Christ. He should have been on that sub. He should have. They took the wrong... They took the wrong son. Yeah, took yeah. the wrong white man. Yeah. Anyway, let's move from the depths of the ocean to the skies above, yeah. because this year people were once again obsessed with UFOs. Sorry, UAPs. Yeah. Just doesn't sound... UFOs. They're yeah. fucking UFOs. UAP just doesn't roll off the tongue as good. Laps. Yeah, yeah, and for good reason, too. Not only were more reports released about previous sightings and encounters, but now the military was shooting them out of the sky. Yeah. Okay, I mean, those were actually just balloons. The government says they're pretty sure that they're Chinese spy balloons, but that doesn't mean they weren't unidentified flying objects at one point. By definition. They weren't yet identified. Uh Uh-huh. So, yeah, the year started out with a report from the government office that tracks UFOs that said sightings of these objects had increased by the hundreds. And then a month later, they started shooting down UFOs or UAPs, which culminated in the president of the United States addressing the nation about it. A few months after that, NASA held a public meeting about UFOs where they spoke about their research into unexplained sightings. Despite being a big headline, there was nothing new here. They even made sure to reiterate that UFOs don't mean there's alien life forms flying around. Quote, I want to emphasize this loud and proud. There is absolutely no convincing evidence for extraterrestrial life associated with unidentified objects, NASA's Dan Evans said after the meeting. Well, people stopped giving a shit about what that guy said a few weeks later when, according to NPR, three military veterans testified in Congress's highly anticipated hearing on UFOs, including a former Air Force intelligence officer who claimed the U.S. government has operated a secret multi-decade reverse engineering program of recovered vessels. He also said the U.S. has recovered non-human biologics from alleged crash sites. So the Pentagon then launched a new website for declassified info. NASA finally released their UFO report, but without a little green alien walking around, there's not much to get excited about. Show me the goods. What do they look like? I mean, that was the theory that I I guess was sort of, not 100% confirmed, but at least sort of confirmed that like, that was the theory for so long that like, even if there aren't actual alien bodies, it seems likely that the governments of the world have reverse engineered some kind of technology. Yeah. But anyways, without the alien, who cares, right? We got a lot of other stuff I going on I want to see world. what they look like. Are they big? Are they small? Which is why when Mexico held their public UFO meetings back in September of this year, they pulled out all the stops. They invited a ufologist who brought two mummified alien bodies with him and debuted them to the world. Turns out, Elliot, they're small. Yeah, they're just little guys. Yeah. You could kick them. Yeah, not so scary anymore. No. Finally, some alien bodies to back up all this UFO talk. Checkmate. Everyone. Yeah, someone at some point took a bunch of chicken bones and just sort of rearranged them into a little doll. Yeah. And and that's that's what we saw there. But wouldn't it be cool if they were actual aliens? And we could... We could definitely kick their asses. Yeah, I want to believe. They better have advanced space gun technology because otherwise, one-on-one, I'll I'll say it. Just like the Americans who think they can fight a bear, I think I could fight an alien. Well, only one way to find out. That's right. Give me the aliens. Oh, yeah. uh, God damn it. God damn it. Gang, gang. Mmm, mm. ice cream so good. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Gang, gang. Balloon. Bop, 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 Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Gang, gang. Oh, so yeah. Do you remember the NPC TikTok live stream craze that blew up for about two weeks over the summer? I know I do. Let's never speak of it again now. Yeah. And while we are flushing our memories of dumb viral moments from this year down the toilet, it's time to leave the following sentence behind as well. We had a good run, but... Uh, Time to put this one in the trash. One last time for posterity. Baby Gronk just stole Livy from the Drip King. On his visit to LSU, Baby Gronk rizzed up Livy, and they started dating. Is Baby Gronk the new Drip King, or is Livy just using him for clout? 
All right, we're gonna need to cleanse this room yeah. with sage or something when we're done. Yeah, there's a lot of bad energy in here now. Baby Gronk. Baby Gronk, 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 Gronk. Gronk, Gronk. Gronk. Uh, turns out that's more of a sad story because his dad is definitely just like using his son as a vessel to yeah, live, live his own dreams. It's not cool. No. But speaking of things that make us feel like old men yelling at clouds, AI dominated the news this year and quickly became the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. AI fixes this. We obviously had AI across the entire tech sector for years in more subtle ways, but with the fall of crypto and NFTs after the pandemic, tech companies, they really needed something huge to show the world they're still on the cutting edge, they're still innovating, there's new stuff coming out. It's a big time for tech, baby. The current wave of AI deployment is heavily focused on bots that you can talk to, you can date, and request silly pictures from. It's Dumb. In early 2023, people were shocked by how well programs like OpenAI's ChatGPT could string words together or create surreal artistic masterpieces. Mm -hmm. Now, the alert quickly wore off for most people when they realized that these bots were not only just stringing words together while sometimes completely hallucinating facts, but they were stealing and learning from copyrighted material. Same goes for the art AI bots. A bunch of stolen training data that produced images that I guess are impressive for a machine, but still remain well within the uncanny valley. Even to this day, you can identify something that is AI yeah. instantly. Yeah, there's always just something, something off about it's, him. It's either the hands, which it still hasn't done correctly, or the, the easiest way still is that it just looks waxy. Yeah, waxy, the hair, it doesn't understand like hair yeah. that well. Yeah, what and, has become, and all the people making these things, Telling them what to do, just are they have no artistic? Uh, they just don't understand what makes. They're art already good. inherently lazy, so the prompts they do are lazy too. Yeah. So it results in an even lazier final product. But I have noticed an uptick in people using and trying to get away with this uh, for promotional things, like uh, on Instagram and whatnot. And I'm just like, there's a fucking uh, like a, there was an art festival in LA, yeah, yeah. and the art festival was advertising the art festival with clearly. AI generated art, it's just yeah. like, it's just upsetting and no one's getting away Come with on. it. Come on. Uh, so companies really told on themselves when these products started hitting the market because the, they very quickly indicated they would no longer need any of those creative people behind the scenes who'd been doing tasks like researching, writing, drawing, painting, coding, problem solving, etc. You're fired. Yeah. However, some industries were shocked to find out that people weren't going to put up with this garbage and months-long strikes took place that resulted in new guardrails for the use of AI in their fields. In addition to that, over the course of the year, AI has so far proven to be a gimmick that doesn't even work that well. It gets worse over time. It simply cannot stop stealing from other people's pre-existing work. Also, sometimes the AI goes woke, unfortunately. Yeah. Artificial intelligence is not going away, ever. But it will probably be deployed and used in far more subtle ways going forward, please. Because the current wave of AI is just, it's disliked by pretty much everyone. It is just a, a, a fundamentally repellent technology. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these next few folks are people that we talk about constantly on this show, for better or worse. Some of their antics are entertaining, sure. But we have to keep in mind that they are actually governing our country. And in one particular case, might actually regain control entirely if we are not careful. So we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on them because we have, again, plenty of videos for you to rewatch if you get bored over the holiday break. But let's start with a very quick overview of Mr. George Anthony DeVolder Santos, oh. who we simply have to bring up because he was very much a main character this year. No one has risen faster, burned brighter, and then was immediately removed from their position in Congress faster than notorious scam artist George Santos. Our generation's Icarus. <laughs> who really only popped onto the world's radar this year when people started looking into his many dubious claims after he won the election for his district in New York. And we've gone over the list so many times on this show, but he basically lied or lied about or embellished every single aspect of his life and even did a few crimes along the way. A few? Many, many crimes. So these crimes, lies, and scams all ranged from hilarious to downright evil. But once he was in Congress, he put on his tap dancing shoes and he really stole the show. He gave everyone the razzle-dazzle they were waiting for. That's right. The feather boas were flowing. Mm -hmm. By February of this year, the House Ethics Committee was already moving forward on an investigation to determine whether Santos may have engaged in unlawful activity with respect to his 2022 congressional campaign, among other actions. 
This caused Santos to really dig his heels in and align with the likes of Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert. He also immediately announced his re-election bid for 2024 in what appeared to be a way to protect himself from the investigation somehow. Unfortunately for Mr. Santos, by May, he'd already been charged with fraud and expulsion efforts were already in the works. In October, more charges were thrown on the pile, including charges of conspiracy, wire fraud, false statements, falsification of records, aggravated identity theft, and credit card fraud, among many other charges. And at this point, even members of his own party, they'd seen enough. Mm -hmm. Within weeks, Santos would be ousted from Congress. Historically, I think the, what, sixth person to ever do it, mm -hmm. and can now be found on Cameo, making videos for people just not us. Mm -hmm. He rejected us. That's right. He also, I uh, saw this on the timeline last night, he is charging $9 a month to see his tweets now, where he's spilling the tea. It's like those paywalled tweets where like it shows like the first line or yeah. two and it's like subscribe <clears throat> for more. So uh, King of he, the grift. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, again, if you give this man money, that's on you. It was on us, but luckily yeah. we got that money back because there was an intermediary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, this certainly will not be the last we hear of George Santos, who uh, still faces all those charges and will most likely be incarcerated at some point next year, which possibly is, for a long time. Which is why he has to get all this stuff done now. Yeah, got to got to grift it up. But while we're on the topic of this particular squad, Lauren Boebert had a busy year. Oh, baby. She became a grandmother at the ripe old age of 36 mm, in April. Gilf. And a whole slew of news blips here and there as she tried her best to derail any progress in Congress. But the biggest scandal of the year for Bobert happened during a nice date night out to the touring Broadway musical Beetlejuice, where she was caught vaping throughout the entire show and apparently giving her new boyfriend an over-the-pants hand job right there in the middle of the theater. She also had her titty out, mm, and, he yeah. was, and he was feeling around at it. Mm -hmm. Now, she lied about all this, of course, but the theater quickly released security footage that confirmed the other theater goers' complaints and actually resulted in a sort of apology from Bobert, where she said she'd fallen short of her values and that she's not going to date liberals anymore. Okay? I don't know, Lauren. Looks like you had fun. And apparently that was like a first date. Yeah, she's uh, she, she's 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 she a She puts animal. out. She puts out that Lauren. She uh, if she if she if she if she, if she smokes, she pokes. Yeah. If she vapes, she. Well, I don't. Mm. Don't say that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. She vapes. She dates. I don't. Know. Anyways, that guy got a feel on a booby and got a little over the hand pants job on the first date out at Beetlejuice the musical. So everyone won. Yep, we all won, didn't we, folks? America, another uh, notch. For the rest of the world to say, look how good they're operating over there. Look at us. We're like the French now. I saw a video the other day, randomly brought up on a, a, a recap thing. Because I guess it's part of the year. The It was a latecomer, but the, the charged lemonades from Panera. Oh, yeah. I saw a video that was like, this might be the most American video I've seen recently. A, a video where the European mind, truly, I don't think could comprehend it. It was a guy, and it was playing, it was a guy like sitting in his garage. And Freebird is blasting. And he takes mm. one of those like nicotine packs and shoves the nicotine pack into his mouth. Snooze? And then yeah, and then chugs the charged lemonade. Freebird! I can't change. <laughs> he did puke uh, in the video shortly after that. Yeah, that's that's too much. Nicotine and charged lemonade, that's a wild ride gonna get your stomach uh, oh you, sort of. you're gonna be wobbling <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway oh. uh, fuck i guess we got to talk about donald trump he's obviously on this big dumb recap again seventh year in a row yeah. anyway he's another guy where it would be exhausting to go over everything that happened to him this year but suffice it to say he was not a very good year for donald trump because uh, the walls really seem to be closing in on him but he also might be the next president so who knows he's, who knows? <laughs> We're just existing in this quantum state right now where yeah. one of those two outcomes is on the horizon next Schrodinger's year. Schrodinger's criminal. He's currently facing dozens of felony charges across multiple states. The wheels of justice actually seem to be kind of moving despite the former president's best efforts. And despite all this, he's still absolutely dominating the polls and will most likely become the official Republican candidate for president of the United States, barring some legal consequences that make that impossible, despite there being 
No Not real really, framework yeah. for that to even happen. Because this is literally unprecedented. Yeah, uh, they just are, the founders failed to consider, and here we are <laughs> dealing with their mess. Yeah. So yeah, we'll just leave you with this. Uh, we know it sucks that we live in a place where you only get to choose between two elderly men, and Joe Biden has a lot of issues. Genocide Joe, uh, I mean, look, he's done some good things, I guess. He doesn't sure. get a lot of credit for it because he does appear old and senile. Um, because he is old and senile. The fact yeah. of the matter is this country would be permanently damaged in real and horrific ways if Donald Trump is reelected as president next year. He has already literally said that he would become a dictator. Even his uh, people within his party are like, hey, can you tone down that rhetoric? And he's like, no. Yeah, he's really good at putting shit in perspective where like Joe Biden, I could not dislike this man anymore. And Donald Trump's like, hey, by the way, just in case you forgot, I would be so much fucking worse yeah. than even this. So thank you, sir. Also, mm -hmm. yeah, his plans have been laid out and they're well documented. It's kind of scary. It's yeah. bad. We hate to be the ones who say, you know, you got to suck it up and vote for the uh, the other shitty old man. But uh, jokes aside, yeah, you do kind of have to. Yeah. At Trump, least, I don't know. Uh, Trump, Trump cannot become president again or it will result in the downfall uh, of America as we know it. That is not hyperbole. We are begging you not to allow this, and we'll, we'll try would, our best. It would be cool if after one of these most the, these recurring most important elections in world history, there was anything at all done to, you know, not make the next election the most important election in world history, but uh, <sighs> alas. Yeah, here we are again. we have. I mean, we'll, we'll be here next year to sound the alarms as they happen, but uh, not exactly a great position. To no, it in. sucks. No. It sucks. I'm not going to blame anyone for feeling just completely alienated by the whole system. Yeah. But well, let's move on. <sighs> whoop, whoop, that's the sound of the police. Do you remember when that cop fell down the slide? That was awesome. That was a big highlight for the year. Uh, the, the Phil Collins edit was great. Yeah. Um, people were going to the slide and testing it out, being like, what happened? They're like, no, it's just a normal slide. It's that cop uniform. Something about that cop. The cop blah, 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 blah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that was one of the highlights of this year. And we'll leave you with that. A, a, a high note to go out on and a warm, heartfelt goodbye. Uh, not goodbye. I'll see you later. Thank you all so much for making this one of the best years of our show. I mean, it's incredible to see how much this channel has grown in just this past year, especially considering that next June will mark 10 years of me and Elliot doing this show together. Oh, no. The fact that we're still here having fun and you're still here watching is incredible. We can't thank you enough. We hope that you had a, a good year, all things considered. I know there's a lot of very dark and bleak things happening in the world right now. Uh, we do... Uh, Focus on that sometimes. We otherwise try to run a pretty fun and entertaining show. We do hope to see you back here in 2024. We're just taking a short break for the holidays. Please don't forget about us. I'm always terrified that uh, taking any time off will result in YouTube just knocking our show down all the way to the bottom of the barrel. So please uh, do all of the, the following things to help us out. Uh, we are going to ask very hard because it is the last episode of the year. Please! We've earned it. Please like the video. Subscribe to the channel. If you feel like it or you can, contribute by hitting the join button or leaving a super comment or super chat or whatever. Make sure the bell is clicked so you get alerted to our videos. Leave a comment. Leave a Reply to a comment. Do all those things that we always ask you to do, but for serious this time. And then have a great, hopefully relaxing holiday season. We'll see you next year. If for some reason you haven't seen our previous videos, they're popping up now. We'll let you know in a, in a little bit what happened to that goat. Oh, yeah. Still alive is when we film this. There you go. Have a good rest of the year. Bye. Bye.